All right, everyone. Well, we'll get started here. Um, so, welcome everybody to the uh, Dr. Feynman's weekly uh, Zoom call. Today, I'll be my usual topics of circadian biology and optimal health. But, you know, welcome up to your question and answers for whatever you guys want to chat about today. Thank you. I know um, I sent out kind of an epic email this morning. So, thank you for reading it and uh, showing up tonight. Um, start off. Um, we did try to get the uh, uh, information from the one uh, location that we knew was potentially start doing the uh, COVID antibody testing. Um, it looks like they're not ready to go live just yet. Um, have another workaround I'm uh, looking at, but in the interim, um, if you are interested, Palm Health is offering the antibody testing, I believe starting today. You don't have to be a member of Palm Health to be able to get the testing done. I think the test is about $259 um, to get it done and you get the results in three to five days. Um, it's a test if you've, you know, you're not actively having COVID type symptoms. So not if you have a bra, short of breath, cough, so it's just more if you think you've had it a few weeks ago and recovered and want to know if you had it. Um, Palm Health looks like they have the capabilities to start doing it at this point. But it's one of those tests because it's so new. Um, it's not um, in, um, covered by insurances at this point. Um, so it is an out-of-pocket cost if you're interested in doing it. So once I know a little bit more, if there's other locations in town, I'll keep uh, updating you guys. So um, <clears throat> that's really the only thing I was had planned on talking about for COVID tonight. If you guys have other questions about it, more happy to answer it at the end. But um, I gave a talk uh, last week to Ostia Strong and some of their members about optimal circadian rhythms, helps with your immunity and such. So I was going to kind of review a few of the slides uh, that I had done uh, during that presentation. So. So I won't go through the whole whole thing, but I'll uh, um, give you the, the highlights. So, you know, as you guys know, I frequently talk about blue light hazards and red light and sunlight and circadian rhythms, but uh, this was kind of a, a new presentation I put together for them because I want to know a little bit about, you know, when was the optimal time to work out, when was the optimal time to, you know, take certain supplements and such. So um, I kind of put this together for them. So circadian basically is a uh, around dia is day, so around a day is a 24 hour cycle. Um, you make different hormones throughout the day based off of the uh, time of day it is. And the two major things that set your circadian rhythm is the light that enters your eye and the time that meals come into your system. So you know, typically your blood pressure starts rising in the morning time, melatonin levels start going down, so cortisol levels start rising up. Cortisol is mainly uh, increasing the morning time as blue light is entering your eye, blue light from the sun, ideally. Um, approximately within an hour of waking up and eating, you should be uh, moving your GI system. If you don't move your GI system within an hour or so, that's usually a marker that your circadian rhythms are uh, not in balance. Then uh, there's the timing of day for exercise. You, know, you can exercise any time of day that you want, but if you want to be as fast as possible, that's going to be mid-afternoon and strong as possible, it's going to be late in the evening. So I know some Olympic uh, records are set in those time frames. Um, and then your blood pressure should start decreasing you know, as you're going to sleep. Um, and as your temperature also should be going down. So I frequently recommend this book to people if they want to know more about circadian rhythms. Dr. Panda wrote this book. Um, he has talks a little bit about how the light enters the eye. Well, I'll go through that again. Um, but his book also mainly touches upon the time restricted eating components of the time of day that the nutrients come in. So ideally 12 hours or less. So light enters your eye, hits the back of the eye. There's a receptor in there that uh, senses different wavelengths of light. It's transmitted to what's known as the supercosmetic nucleus. Basically it's a part of the brain that's like the master clock and then it talks to the rest of the, the clocks in the system. So this was a rainbow, uh, just to demonstrate the different uh, wavelengths of light. Uh, this was a uh, year or so ago in Puerto Rico. It was actually a double rainbow. It's a little bit faint to show up on this part here, but, but that's just to show you that, you know, 
there's a visible spectrum of light and then there's stuff that you can't see, but your body still gets um, interacted with. So on one side of it, it's going to be the gamma rays and natural rays pass right straight through you and can be um, mitogenic and um, also cause some issues with your DNA getting broken. Um, so you don't want to be exposed to gamma rays and x-rays long term. Then you have the color spectrum that you can see, the violet, blue, then kind of green, yellow, red, and then the infrared. Infrared you can think of as mostly as heat, and you get into the, uh, the radio waves. So sometimes I use the analogy of, you know, wavelengths matter because FM and AM are different for those who still remember uh, those type of radios. Um, you know, if you dial in something on the FM station, you're not going to hear an AM station. And so your body is that same way. Certain um, receptors, especially in the mitochondria, are listening to certain wavelengths. So if you put in the wrong wavelengths, they don't listen to that message. So this is just a uh, diagram of how different wavelengths of sun hit your body throughout the day. In the morning time, there's no UV radiation, so you're not going to get burnt, you're not going to injure your eyes. Amazingly, you have this visible light and infrared light heat. And then by midday, you get UVA radiation, UVB radiation, UVB goes away, UVA goes away, and then you're back to just visible and infrared light. So it's not just the color of light, it's also the intensity or the lux. Um, so the brighter the light, the more your body gets that uh, message. Um, to turn on certain hormones and neurotransmitters. So what seems bright to you inside, maybe only two to 300 lux. This lux is just a measurement of intensity of light. You outside, sometimes it's 16,000 lux. So it still looks bright to you, but that brightness is also another trigger for your brain, how you make your hormones. So this is the blue light hazard. So when I say blue light, it's mainly the artificial light coming off your technology screens. Blue light from the sun is balanced with red light, so you're not gonna have a problem with that. But your technology tends to have about four to five times the blue light compared to red light. That blue light still stimulates a certain part of the brain, and that will lower your melatonin as one of the major things. Melatonin is a very important hormone, which we'll speak of. <clears throat> Basically, light in your eye lowers melatonin, affects your sleep. So I'll skip to this one. So, I have a little bit of a picture of a seesaw. So low melatonin, high cortisol, cortisol being one of your stress hormones, makes your blood more sticky, makes your blood sugar rise, um, and it raises your blood pressure. So at nighttime, you want your cortisol levels to be dropping and your melatonin levels to be rising. If you're always exposed to artificial light, the blue light will destroy the body to release melatonin. Then likely your cortisol rises and then you know, from a heart standpoint, that's bad news. Your blood pressure goes up at night while you're sleeping, your blood's more sticky, you're more likely to have a harder stroke when that is happening. <clears throat> Excuse me. These are all the things that blue light can do to you. It can affect your memory, make it harder to learn, and cause depression because it's lowering certain uh, feel-good neurotransmitters in the, in the body. It can increase your risk of obesity by affecting your blood sugars. It can uh, affect your glucose, for sure, um, you know, there is, you know, reports in our Volco and like 2011 was writing reports that just blue light and non-native EMF raises blood sugar irrespective of any carbohydrates or food that you're eating. Unmitigated blue light can definitely contri contribute to cataracts as well as damaging your retina. And then the World Health, well, World Health Organization has um, quantified the, um, blue light hazard, not necessarily blue light hazard, but just doing shift work when you're working out of balance is a um, carcinogen. So um, I previously was a night shift person, you know, doing a lot of night call for my cardiology fellowship and stuff. And, you know, last year I kind of switched around my practice so that uh, I can control my circadian rhythms better. For those that are joining on Instagram, thank you for joining tonight. We're just kind of going through a couple of my slide decks. The previous week when I gave a talk to Austin Strong about optimal circadian rhythms. Sorry, you can't see the slides. I don't know if you know, Instagram's ever going to let us uh, show slides at the same time, but um, I will have my slide deck available up on uh, YouTube later so if you want to see the actual slides. Thank you, Dr. Lyon. You're the best as well. <clears throat> All right, so here's some pictures on different uh, light bulbs and things that um, 
your body gets interacted with. So the bright LEDs and compact fluorescents, they're very high in the blue light spectrum and that 450 nanometers, that blue light at that nanometer range destroys your body's ability to release melatonin. You can see that the LEDs and the compact fluorescence will depress your melatonin by about 80% or so. Without melatonin, it's very hard to stay asleep and get restorative sleep. Melatonin is also a master antioxidant, it makes your body not rust. Melatonin is also something that basically acts as fuel to your mitochondria to help repair them at night. Your mitochondria are the engines to your cells. Without enough melatonin, the mitochondria don't work well. Without mitochondria that work well, you don't have the energy that your body needs to function. Then you can see that the old school incandescent bulbs, the old Edison bulbs, you know, they were much more energy inefficient. They were giving, giving off a lot of heat or that infrared light. Um, that infrared light, you know, balanced it out more. There wasn't as much blue light coming from those incandescent bulbs. So it didn't affect melatonin as much. And then a candle really doesn't affect melatonin very much at all because it doesn't have that much light intensity. And this is just another uh, diagram of how different uh, wavelengths of light look. Uh, screen left is basically the uh, wavelengths of sunlight, where it's all wavelengths all together. Then I already mentioned, you know, the LEDs and the uh, compact fluorescents have those big spikes of blue and also green. The glasses I'm wearing, we'll talk about glasses in a moment. But these glasses block out all blue and all green. Skip that one for now. Talk a little bit about heliotherapy. Heliotherapy is using sun for uh, regenerative purposes. And this is just a picture from when I was down in Cancun in January with Dr. Cruz. Um, but this is what I usually try to teach people. Uh, you know, they always ask me how I get such a good tan and don't burn. Um, I basically do these things. So um, building up my solar catalyst and hybrid tanning, which I'll teach you guys tonight. So, so much like your hands are gonna be very uh, soft and doughy if you don't do manual labor. I think my dad's still on here. Yeah, I still don't do a lot of manual labor. Um, so I still have nice soft hands at this point, but uh, without calluses, you know, your hands get torn up when you're, you know, swinging a hammer. Same way with your skin. If your skin is you know, out in the sun 24 hours a day and it's not been preconditioned, it's going to be getting damaged. So you need to kind of build up your solar callus over time. So one way you can do that is through hybrid tanning. Essentially what hybrid tanning is, is you're outside right after sunrise where there's no UV radiation, so you're not going to get burnt, but your skin's absorbing all the red and, and infrared light. Water in the cells essentially are getting preconditioned for when UV radiation comes out later that day. So if you get a lot of red light in the morning time, you can absorb more UV light without getting damaged. If you suck up too much UV light and start, you know, burning, um, then make sure you're out at sunset. The UV radiation goes away at sunset. That red light at nighttime when the sun is setting is regenerative. It's like a, you know, one of those. I got over my shoulder the. You know, red light boxes. I'll talk about the red light boxes in uh, just a few minutes. Um, but the sun is your natural red light. So um, how can you also, you know, not burn is use that D-Minder app. I always recommend people uh, download this free app. Uh, I think I have a couple slides that show you exactly how to use it. Uh, always get the question when I give these talks about, you know, what about sunscreen and what about it? Um, and personally, I avoid sunscreen and I just use physical blockers. So if I'm getting to my sun, I put a hat on, put a long sleeve you know, rash guard or shirt on, or go hide in the shade. Um, typically, I tell people for sunscreens that, you know, if you're going to put it on your skin, you got to be willing to put it in your mouth because, if, you know, if you're not going to swallow it and get into your system that way, you don't want to be absorbing it through your skin. So for the rare exceptions, you know, you're stuck out on a boat, you absolutely have no shade. Can you wear sunscreen? Yeah, it's an exception. But ideally, wear you know a um, hat and clothes. But if you don't have those things and have to do uh, sunscreen, use a uh, physical blocker like the titanium dioxides that don't get into the skin. Uh, other good things to know about you know how you can avoid burning is have an optimal omega six to omega three ratio. Um, the omega sixes are mostly the vegetable oils. The omega threes are found in the cold water fish. If you have a ratio of omega six to omega three of approximately four or less. You're much less likely to burn. Your skin just more likely to absorb the light without uh, having the, uh, the thermal effects. And then another way you would know if you've been getting enough sunlight uh, for health purposes is having a vitamin D level of around 60. And this is without supplementing with vitamin D3. 
You can't take oral vitamin D3 and expect to have a healthy immune system. You still need all the other wavelengths of light to program your cells. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is just a picture of the different uh, UV indexes. It's pretty self-explanatory. The higher the UV index, the uh, less time you have to be outside before you're gonna start burning. So, um, you know, I think uh, even just the regular Apple uh, weather app tells you what the UV index is. Uh, these are just a pair of color changing beads, um, kind of from like a hobby supply store for teachers. Uh, these beads change color from white to purple uh, whenever there's UV radiation present. So I just made a little bracelet that uh, when I was down in Puerto Rico in February, anytime you're outside, if it turned to purple, you knew the UV radiation was out. So, you know, start the clock and then, you know, get into the shade. And once they're back to white, you know you're not going to burn. Uh, this is just the, the screenshot of what the DMinder app looks like. This is the, uh, um, the free version, the paid version. It has a couple other features, but you can get by with the free version. But essentially, you just uh, fire up the app. It knows where you're at from the GPS, and it'll tell you what time of day that the sun's going to be high enough in the sky that you can start making vitamin D on your skin. Your skin is a basically a solar panel. The more skin in the game, the more vitamin D that you can make. And at least in St. Louis, there's about two months out of the year that you can make no vitamin D, no matter how much skin is exposed. So this will help you track your vitamin D exposure. You basically tell it how much skin is exposed, how much cloud cover there is. Yes, even if it's cloudy, some UV radiation will still probably get through the atmosphere, not as much. Um, it's still beneficial to be outside in the sunlight, even if there's clouds. But you can see on these apps that, you know, at least this one, I think this was in LA, the example, this person was making 2,600 uh, IUs in 16 minutes um, and 162 units a minute. So even if you're popping vitamin D in at 1,000 units a day, 5,000 units a day, you can see just being outside 30 minutes a day or so, you're going to make enough vitamin D on your skin. But you got to put the skin in the game. Sleep, you know, you guys have heard me talk about sleep before, so I'm just going to hit upon the highlights of this. Um, you know, if you want me to do another full-on sleep lecture, I'll do that again in another week. But I always talk about the sleep sanctuary, the sleep cave, dark, cool, quiet, minimize your tech. If you know what this is about, you know what this is about, but have a blackout curtain, uh, cut down on the light in your bedroom so that you can't see your hand in front of your face. Uh, if you're really a hardcore biohacker and you can't get your room cold enough, um, you can get a, a chili pad that sits on the top of your bed, puts this filtered distilled water through the bed and you can dial in different temperatures so that if you want it absolutely freezing on your side, but your bed partner doesn't want it uh, 55 degrees, which is extremely cold to sleep at, um, you can dial it up at a higher degree. I think it goes up to like 105 degrees. Uh, no Wi-Fi. Um, I told you guys many times I shut my Wi-Fi off at night. I have the Wi-Fi router plugged into a strip that has a light on it. Um, if the light's on, I know the Wi-Fi is on. So if you shut off the Wi-Fi, you know, basically, you know, there's no harm in turning off your Wi-Fi at night, and there's some theoretical benefit. So if you think of your mitochondria as something that is sensing the environment all the time, Wi-Fi is just a different type of light that is in the environment, just light that you can't see with your eyes, but your body can still sense it. And if you're sleeping right by your Wi-Fi router, it may act somewhat as a radar jammer to your cells while they're trying to sense the environment. So I've seen previous case reports of it, and I've had one patient that actually happened to that would have nightmares. The second they shut off the Wi-Fi, the nightmares went away. Um, I can't tell you exactly how that works, but um, I'm sure it's having some effect on you know, calcium gates in the brain, but, um, but it's just a simple fact. You know, if you're not sleeping well, minimize your technology in the room. One easy thing is shut off your Wi-Fi at night. The other thing is your devices, uh, your cell phones. Ideally, they're out of your bedroom, but if they gotta be in your bedroom, keep them in airplane mode. Or if they, you know, if you're on call and you have to be able to be available and be reachable, then as far away as possible from your uh, your head at night. So don't use it as your alarm clock. Um, if you're using it as your alarm clock, it needs to be in airplane mode. Um, there are uh, different software programs you can use to mitigate some of the blue light out of your devices. Um, you know, frequently I use on my computer Iris. It works a little bit better than Flux. It cuts down a little bit on the flicker effect more, but um, Flux, there's a free version of it on your iPhone or iPad. There's Night Shift. Night Shift is not sufficient. It's better than nothing, 
but if you don't um, have you know blue blockers, you know fine, throw on the night shift. But there's still some light getting through there that can affect your melatonin. So you don't want to be doing what this guy's doing in bed. You don't want to be sitting in bed with a dark room, the screen blasting your face with blue light. Um, on one of my phones, I don't have it with me right at this moment, but I actually have a physical blocker on it. It's like the old school uh, screen protectors. It's um, it's yellow tinted. Got it from lowbluelights.com. I think it's about 15 bucks or so. But that uh, physical blocker um, allows you so that you don't need to have the software running 24 seven and you don't necessarily need to wear the glasses. So I used to have that on one of my phones when I was on call more. So if I had called more night, I could look at it without uh, zapping myself. And then, let's see, <clears throat> and then glasses. Um, these are um, more my nighttime glasses. Sometimes I'll wear these if I'm sitting in front of a computer and I have a phone going as well. Um, but Typically, I wear one or two sets. You know, I have my kind of day pair that block mostly just the, the very intense blue light, um, mostly coming from their technology. These ones block all that same wavelength of blue light, but then they also block a lot of the green spectrum. That green spectrum can also affect melatonin. So if you really are having trouble with your sleeping, you probably need both pairs, um, and especially wearing these ones about an hour before your natural bedtime. You usually get pretty tired start wearing these. So you don't necessarily want to be wearing these ones 24 hours a day. Another thing is these are really like your quote indoor sunglasses. When you're outside in nature, you take these things off and let mother nature's sunlight into your eyes. Then uh, photobiomodulation, low level laser therapy. This is kind of one of my areas of uh, interest right now. Um, this guy is standing in front of two uh, full body panels. Um, there's multiple manufacturers of things, but then again, quality matters. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the benefits of the red light therapy. And I'll probably do a kind of a full on red light therapy talk for you guys in the near future. But um, think of the red light therapy as something that augments sunlight. The sun is always going to be able to do this, um, but red light can be used when it's more cloudy or in the evening time or when you're traveling and don't have access to, you know, good quality sun, bust out one of your red lights. And over my shoulder, I have a red light box going on just because some of it balances the, the blue light that's coming from all these screens right now. So red light, the best way you can think of it is it's basically charging the batteries. It's helping the mitochondria work better through multiple different mechanisms. So it's mainly regenerative, so lowers inflammation, helps with joint pain, joint swelling. If you have underactive thyroid hypothyroidism, sometimes this is due to, um, it's due to something called Hashimoto's where your body's making antibodies towards your thyroid. One of the thoughts that the antibodies might be being made is that you're sitting in front of one of these screens for eight hours a day, the light from your technology is penetrating your thyroid gland and you're affecting it. So anybody who has Hashimoto's, I frequently recommend burning up their shirt, wearing a scarf, doing something that protects their neck. But otherwise, you know, they can get one of these red light boxes and put it in front of their neck for eight minutes a day. Definitely helps with athletic performance and cellular energy. It can also um, help you with just getting uh, recovered faster from injuries because it's lowering inflammation and swelling. Can help with testosterone production, but it's one of those things that uh, uh, the light has to get where you make your testosterone. So you can use your imagination and how you can boost your testosterone with one of these uh, red light boxes. It can help with skin health, um, mainly by making collagen um, work more effectively. So wrinkles go away, it can help with uh, gingivitis and gum issues. And there are laser devices, laser hats that help with hair loss. The red light basically stimulates the mitochondria and the hair follicles and starts causing the hair follicles to regrow. This is you know, a good picture of what a mitochondria looks like. And this is where about 80, 85% of the, uh, the chronic diseases start. So the better you treat your mitochondria, the better you tend to do. And your mitochondria are mainly located in your brain, heart, and your immune system. Yeah, I might be a cardiologist, but anything you do to fix your mitochondria in your heart tends to help with your brain mitochondria and your mitochondria in your muscles and your immune system. I won't go through the, uh, the, the, uh, the full on uh, uh, respiratory chain here, but uh, essentially the way you think of how red light works is that the light stimulates different um, proteins that are in this little respiratory chain, and it makes it the little blue thing on the screen here it's called the ATPA, so it looks like a top. The faster it spins, the more energy it pumps out. Normally, this thing spins when basically food energy comes through the system, but if you put the right light energy through it, you can get this thing to spin without having to put food through it. 
So this is one thought why you're on a beach vacation, you may not have as much of an appetite because if you're soaking up a ton of sun, your body's giving it more energy than you're used to because most people 90% of the time are living indoors, they're not outdoors. So if you're out on the beach, you're probably not gonna be as hungry because you don't need as much food electrons to spin this top. Uh, these are just the different wavelengths of red light. Again, um, wavelengths matter. It's much like the FM and AM radio stations. You know, <clears throat> there's different wavelengths that activate different things in the, the muscles and the mitochondria. But usually around that 660 nanometers is kind of the sweet spot for one of them. And then it's up in the 820 or so nanometers as well. Uh, this is where you need to read your labels. Um, not all red light boxes are made equal. Um, and it really is the wavelength, you know, what color is coming out of the box, the power density, how much intensity is coming out, and then the dose. And the dose has an effect on how close you're standing to it and basically how big the panels are. Uh, this is just a diagram for how deep that the light will actually penetrate the skin. So um, UV radiation really doesn't penetrate very far, but red light penetrates a couple centimeters. Um, so now this is why the red lights and the infrareds can help with muscle and uh, bone pains because it will penetrate a few centimeters. The other ones are gonna be much more superficial. So like blue light barely penetrates the skin, but it can help with acne because it kills the bacteria that can cause acne. Um, this was just a diagram. Um, I should say this was an Instagram story from uh, one of the people that makes one of these red light boxes. That's actually the one I'm using. And I had a conversation with him and he actually posted something about a quote I had told him once. Um, was that your heart is approximately by weight one third uh, mitochondria. So a third of your heart is a mitochondria. So if the mitochondria are broken and they don't make energy, that's when you get heart failure or you get a cardiomyopathy and the heart can't squeeze as vigorously. There's two types of heart failure. There's systolic where the pump doesn't squeeze and then there's diastolic where the heart doesn't relax well. Diastolic's becoming more common, more likely to cause heart failure. So the heart looks like it's working okay, but it's not relaxing. It actually takes much more energy to relax the heart than it does to squeeze it. So you're gonna see diastolic dysfunction more commonly. So one way to get uh, the mitochondria in the heart to work better, you know, there's not gonna be great um, peer reviewed studies on these things, but getting outside like this guy, no shirt on, getting the sun to hit your chest is gonna be beneficial. But if you have one of these red light boxes, you know, it's worth a shot, you know, do it 20 minutes, a couple times a day, hour a day or so in front of your heart if you have any, issues with a weakened heart or you have you know, plaque in your arteries, this can be beneficial possibly without any real side effects. Um, you guys sometimes see me previously wear the laser watch. I'm not currently wearing it, but the laser basically has different uh, settings and can basically put the light directly into your radio and your ulnar artery. And this is the, uh, the most advanced way to get uh, sunlight or they call it sunlight in a vein, but um, this is when I did some bright light uh, intravenous laser a few weeks ago. Um, this isn't something you necessarily need if you're extremely healthy, but if you have an autoimmune condition or have a malignancy, this might be beneficial to your traditional treatments for those conditions. Um, there's a lot of research done in Russia in the 1980s on intravenous laser, mainly uh, red light laser uh, in cardiovascular patients. It was lowering heart attack size, so less heart was getting damaged. It was helping with less uh, issues with the blood being sticky or clotting. So they had a lot of data on it, but because of the Cold War and the uh, language barriers, a lot of that data never made it to the West up until just recently. And then this was the heart rate variability. I've talked about this before, so I'm gonna kind of hold off on going off that part right now. So I'll stop the sharing and then uh, see who's in the group here and uh, um, we'll ask, Anybody have any questions? So, so that's it for the uh, presentation. So I know there's still a few people on the uh, Instagram watching. So I thank you guys for watching. I will put a video of this up on uh, YouTube later. My uh, YouTube channel is just uh, Michael Feynman MD. You can search that on um, Instagram, you'll find it. I'm sorry, on YouTube, you'll find it. Um, but I'm gonna open up to questions. And so if you got any questions on Instagram, type them in. Or if you're on uh, my Zoom call here, you can type in the questions or you can Unmute yourself and uh, speak, speak freely.
but it's quite group tonight. Must have answered everything in the talk then. Then we'll go off topic. So whose hair is the longest so far since the uh, stay at home orders happened? I mean, mine's getting pretty long. I mean, I'm halfway to my nose. I mean, I remember uh, quite a while ago, I had my hair down past my chin. So I'm gonna see if I can get down that long again too. I came in late and I found it hard to hear everything you said. I, I mean, I could hear it, but I couldn't follow it because the connection wasn't perfect. Um, for some of the red light stuff, or I guess in general, is there a fair amount of research behind these things? And again, I apologize if I missed your explaining that already. Well, no worries. Um, so this is uh, was recorded and I also did put on the um, my Osteo Strong talk from Friday where I really went into depth on this. Um, that's on my YouTube channel, Michael Feynman MD. Um, you know, but no, there are thousands upon thousands of articles on photobiomodulation or how light interacts with your biology. Um, and you know, the greatest majority of them are positive. Some of them are neutral or there just wasn't an effect. Uh, I've not seen ones that are you know showing that there's any really negativity to uh, using red light. Um, it's dosage does matter. You know, you can't necessarily overdo it and hurt yourself, but you know, there's a certain dose where your body absorbs the right amount. And then after that, you're not getting more benefit and you'll sometimes start losing the benefit you had if you keep using the thing. So uh, you do need to kind of read the instructions if you end up buying one of these devices. But um, you know, nobody needs a red light box. It's just an augmentation to mother nature. You know, you can get all the, you know, the wavelengths of light you need from going outside. Use the D-Minder app. Uh, question about is there maximum time of day? Um, there's not a maximum time of day, but it really depends on what you're trying to treat and use. Um, so, you know, if you're trying to treat, you know, hair or face, you know, it's probably 20 minutes. You know, if it's a musculoskeletal injury, it's probably 20 minutes, you know, twice a day to whatever area. If it's your heart, you know, 20 to 60 minutes. You know, you don't have to just sit there and do nothing. You can, you know, position yourself in front of the thing and read or, you know, do something else. Um, you know, do you have to wear goggles? Not necessarily. I mean, the, the one I do have, um, if you fire up the center diode, that thing is super bright. So I would not stare directly into that thing um, if you're using that. But, you know, if you just close your eyes, I don't think there's gonna be any issues with it. Um, but if you feel more comfortable wearing the goggles, you can wear the goggles. And does one have to purchase a machine or are there other places one can get access? And what do they cost if you purchase it? Good question. So you know, the question is, you know, there are a couple places that do have some of these red light uh, devices. Um, you know, most places are gonna be kind of the, the med spas and such. <clears throat> the Ask Your Strong franchises have them. Um, you do have to be uh, generally a member of their franchise to be able to use their device. It's usually built into their monthly membership fee. There's probably some gyms that would have one as well. Um, but again, it's quality matters on these things. Um, so, you know, I have a EMR tech, um, EMR TK. Um, I don't get paid to recommend them. I just know that they make a quality device. Um, it depends on how big of a panel you want. You know, the smaller ones tend to be about $300. And you know, if you get a full, you know, full body wall one, it's gonna be a thousand dollars. If you get the, the Nova Thor, which is like the Cadillac of red lights, it's a um, red light tanning bed, essentially, it's about a hundred thousand dollars. So, you know, you can spend whatever your budget allows, but you know, if you're just treating a small area, the $300 boxes tend to work for the majority of things. If there aren't any other questions coming, I'll stick around for them. But um, in the comments, you know, 
drop a comment of you know what uh, what topics you want to learn more about uh, the next time we do these talks. And I'm gonna keep doing these talks Monday night, six o'clock Central Time. Um, Dr. Twyman. Yes, I see. Yeah. You see me? Okay, I tried to type a mess a question in the chat. I'm new at this. Uh, I have been getting uh, plenty of sunlight. I've been following your suggestions, getting out early in the morning. I, my front door is at the east side, so I have a stool there and I do the back and I walk. So I'm trying to do that. But I had a question I typed. Uh, do you think that the graphene physical eye mask is good for just improving vision? I have, I don't know if you can see it or not. The, mm. I use this. Are you familiar with it? I'm not familiar with that piece of technology. Is it, is it like, a, like a pinhole type mask? Uh, no, I, the pinhole glasses, I've used that at those in the past to walk with, but these are like infra. It heats up. So okay. it's like a mask, the infra mask. And I put it on in the mornings before I get up, usually like maybe five or six in the morning and it heats it up. And um, I think it helps the vision. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I'm not familiar with it, but it's it's one of those things that, you know, that's kind of like a, a biohack that you have to do on your own. And, you know, a biohack is just, an experiment that you do to yourself and see if things are better. You're not going to necessarily have data from other people that they've had great results, but if it works for you, it works for you. Um, my only concern would be that how that thing is powered. Is it battery powered or do you plug it into the wall? I plug it into uh, the USB like, uh, like your electronics. So I it's have that. Okay. Comes with it. And yeah, I don't necessarily have it right in front of me. Maybe I do. Nope, I do is um is you have to be careful whenever you put um, anything electronic on your body is you don't know exactly what the electromagnetic frequencies or emfs are coming off of the device so you know there are different meters this is the n in env rd10 um you know just email me if you want more information about it but um but this is a radio frequency a uh, magnetic wave and electronic um, field tester. And so you basically would turn it on, it has different colors, and if it's red, then it's a high frequency, or I should say it's a high field, either radio frequency, magnetic field, or electric field. And if it's high and it's by your eyes, you're sort of zapping your brain and your eyes with high energy that you don't want to be zapping yourself with. So that's why you got to test a lot of these things. You know, so, you know, the manufacturers say they're safe, but if you do your own testing and realize it's not, you don't want to use it. You know, for example, I did use this uh, recently when I was down in, uh, at that Dr. Cruz event, and I was having horrible sleep for a couple of nights. And I usually sleep like a you know rock star, sleep extremely well. But I brought this meter out and I tested the bed, and it was pegged red right where my head would be. And I don't keep my phone by my you know, bed, but it turned out that uh, the, the hotel's like Wi-Fi routers were in the headboards of the bed. And I couldn't shut the thing off. So I basically just had to flip around and sleep on the other side of the bed, feet first uh, down there. And so, you know, less radio frequency up high, sleep improved. So back to your original question, I don't know for sure if that thing is the uh, um, always safe enough for your eyes. You'd have to test it for sure. but. Mm -hmm. Natural sunlight is always going to be beneficial because you're going to get the regular red light and infrared light from the sun in the right balance for the eyes. Okay. Let's see. Uh, here's a question. I'm using a far infrared sauna and a red light exposure. What do you think? Um, I think those are excellent. They do different things for the cells. So the red light, you know, stimulates more of the water around the cells and also certain components of the mitochondria. The infrared helps more with detoxification, helps with uh, muscle um, inflammation, lowering that. Um, so I think that is uh, good. Uh, what does biohack mean? You know, uh, you know Dave Asprey is kind of the quote godfather of biohacking. He has his own definition, but my definition is, you know, you just replace the word biohacking with health optimization. So what can you do to change your environment to improve your health? And basically, how can you do that without necessarily taking a bunch of pills and procedures to get that done? Uh, the EMF meter, this is the, yeah, I'll just type it in the uh, chat box. Um, I can't remember exactly where I got this one from. Um, you know, 
that if you just search for it on Google, there'll be a couple different places that might get, or maybe Amazon might even have it. Um, so it's the EMV RD10. That's a good portable one. I have more um, sensitive meters that do just RF and do just the magnetic, um, but they're bigger and bulkier, and so I don't like to travel with those ones. So that's a good uh, travel one. Is there an article or two that you might suggest on some of these topics that would be intelligible, intelligible for an educated layperson? Uh, yes, um, you know a lot of them are already posted in my uh, Facebook group. I have a private Facebook group that's free to join if you're not already in it. Um, you can just search for Dr. Twyman. Um, yeah, you know, I think I renamed it the Heart Heart Attack Proof Club or something like that. Um, you know, if you got my email this morning, there's a link into that. You can click on it. Um, I frequently put links in there today. I put a link in there about, you know, how to pick a good manufacturer of blue blocking lenses. Um, I routinely post things out there about different red light therapies and uh, photobiomodulation. Thank you. Sure. Let's see. All right. Well, I want to be respectful of everybody's time. And, you know, if there's any other last minute questions, I'm happy to answer it. But otherwise, I'll let you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. And then I will be back here next Monday, 6 p.m. Central Time. And um, if I have any updates on more about the uh, COVID antibody testing in St. Louis. Um, I'll uh, send it out later this week. Um, but I hope you guys have a good evening. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you guys.